can't believe this. All for you insurance, where we're here for Hi. you 24 hours a day, except holidays and Sundays. My name is Esther, how may I help you? Yes, we just got back from vacation and apparently our water heater burst sometime while we were gone, and now everything is just flooded. I wanted to check my coverage. Mm. Oh, I'm so sorry that's happening to you. I will see what I can do. Can I have your policy number, please? Okay, and your last name? And your address. And for security purposes, I'm gonna need you to confirm your social security number, and your mother's maiden name, and your blood type. And I'm also gonna be needing your firstborn child. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, let me check your coverage. Well, I'm sorry to say you didn't put any kind of flood coverage into your policy. Oh, you're kidding me. Nothing? No, ma'am. Oh, well, what about the water heater? Oh, appliances aren't covered. Oh. <laughs> I love you, water heater. Mwah. Most of us do not appreciate our hot water heater enough. Do you have any idea what she goes through every day and how much pressure she's under? She could pop at any moment. Luckily for us, this didn't actually happen, but the water heater that we have is the original to the house, which was 16 years ago. One thing you can do to extend the life of your water heater is to have one of these guys installed if you don't already have one. This is a thermal expansion tank, and it helps relieve some of the pressure that's built up inside of your water heater as the water is heated. This is something you would want to have professionally installed initially. You can actually replace it once it goes bad, and I did do a video about that if you want to check it out. For the first 10 or 12 years we lived in this house, we didn't do anything to maintain this water heater, but there is something that's pretty simple that you can do about every six months that'll help clean out the sediment that gets settled at the bottom of the water heater. All right, so, okay. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. Okay, yeah, I did that the wrong way. Oh, what a mess. I keep a meter on this at all times so that I can monitor the, the pressure of water that's coming into the house. If you watch the video where I replace the thermal expansion tank, you'll know why I do that. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this off. A lot of them will have a regular knob there. Mine doesn't. Take this off. Put a bucket underneath, or you can hook this up to a hose if you like and run it out your door or your window. And turn on the water and let some of the water drain out. Let me see if you can see. You see that dark water that's coming out? And I just did this about a year ago, so, um, you know, that's kind of concerning that there's not much in there. But you want to let about maybe, you know, four or five gallons out if you can. And basically, that just cleans out whatever settled at the down at the bottom and that helps keep it from uh, rusting or wearing out too quickly or clogging up your pipes. Another thing you might want to do is check the bottom and the sides and all around it for rusting and corrosion. Take a look at all of the pipes, the connections, make sure that nothing is rusting or corroded or looks like it's about to pop. You can also adjust the temperature that your water is heated to if you feel like it's too hot or not hot enough. There's also a vacation setting on mine that you could turn it to if you're not going to be home for a week or two. As always, yours might look a little bit different than mine, so you may need to do your own research on that, but just know that it's possible. Now, there is a much more comprehensive and involved servicing that can be done on a water heater. To have a professional do it costs about 100 bucks or so. Uh, you can do it yourself. The instructions are online all over the place. You can find instructions for that, but frankly, it's very complicated. There's a lot of steps to it, and as an average person, I wouldn't feel super comfortable doing that one myself, so in that case, I would hire a plumber to do it. We've actually never even had that servicing done on this one, and it's lasted 16 years. Also, something that homeowners should know that a lot of people don't is how to turn the water off to your house from the main line. For us, there's two places you can do that. Right here is where it initially enters the house before it gets into any of the fixtures or appliances. We also have a shutoff point here in our front yard, right in the middle of the yard, where you can shut the water off before it ever even gets to your house or your garden hoses. And make sure there's no snakes in there. <laughs> that would be bad. The city workers have a nice long tool to be able to shut off your water with so they don't actually have to stick their hand in the ground. In our area, copperheads and rattlesnakes are actually quite common. Now, if you're on a well, this is gonna be different, but if you're on city water, there should be a spot where city workers can easily access your water meter, which is also located right next to the shutoff switch. Yours may be in the middle of your front yard like mine or somewhere else in your yard. It might be attached to the outside of your house. But it also is good for emergency workers and first responders to be able to shut off your water in case of an emergency or your neighbor. That actually brings up another interesting point. Get to know your neighbors and be nice to them because if you're not around and all of a sudden water is gushing out of your garage or your basement or your front door. Oh, hey girl, you have a tsunami coming out of your basement. I'm gonna go shut off your water, okay? 
your neighbors are going to be much more likely to notice and also to help you out if they actually like you. So be nice, y'all. It takes a village. <laughs> Stop! Stop following me. Stop. This dog is like two feet from me at all times. I love you. I do.